Hello composers and creators, it's Zach Heidi, and today I'm going to talk about how we go from this to this. This is a special video, I'm really excited about it. One of my goals in 2021 was to connect with other like-minded creators and composers, and one of the first people I connected with was a guy named Mattia Chiappa. Now you might be asking yourself, who the heck is Mattia? Mattia, get over here. What's up everybody, I hope you're well. My name is Mattia Chiappa. I swear I'm not going to bore you with an interesting details of my life. I'm just very quickly going to say that I'm a composer, orchestrator, musician. In the past year or so, I've been spending some time making YouTube videos and that's how your beloved Zach found me. We discussed about possibly making some music together, so I've sent him a little sketch of a piece I wrote. And I'm now really looking forward to see what he's going to come up with. It was very nice meeting you all for a brief moment and if you want to see the final orchestrated version of the piece, feel free to come over to my channel. Right, so back to you, Zach. Matias got a great YouTube channel filled with resources. I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested in composing or orchestration. Matias and I came up with the idea of taking a sketch of a composition and moving it from the sketch phase to the piano arrangement phase and then finally to the full orchestration phase. This is gonna be the first of the two-part video, chatting mostly about the piano arrangement, but also touching lightly on orchestration. And then if you wanna see the second part, I've linked that in the description so you can check it out for yourself. So before I hop over to the piano, if you enjoy this kind of content, do me a huge favor and leave a like. It really helps me out. Subscribe for more content. And if you wanna support more videos like this, you can check out my Patreon. All right, so we're here in front of the weighted keyboard. I use this piano mostly to sketch ideas uh, when I want to be away from the computer. So what I'm first gonna do is just kind of sight read through this, play it loosely, and then we can talk about some creative ideas and brainstorm as we go. Okay, now soaring romantic part. Oh, that's nice. Oh, he did the thing I was just playing. Okay, now he's got some interesting stuff here. There it is. Okay, so something mysterious at the end and it kind of goes out. All right, so that's a very, 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 very loose playthrough, um, but it kind of gives me an idea of what we're going for. It looks like something kind of 
marchy, triumphant. So let's kind of break this down into bite-sized chunks. Now, Matias is gonna be doing the orchestration for this, but I still wanna keep that in mind as I'm doing the piano arrangement. So this, as a piano arrangement, is more like a piano reduction in the sense that it doesn't need to be totally playable. We can do voicings that are wider than what a pianist could do because it's gonna be going to the orchestra. So with that in mind, I really like the ostinato in the beginning. This is, I think it's, it's great as is, honestly. I don't think it needs much. I can just picture this as like strings. Now, he's got a big, like, fortissimo bram thing here, but I could sort of see this as having more like a ba ba bam and maybe being supported by, like, timpani or something. So I'm gonna play mine with a that sort of thing. Okay, so now he's got some voicings here. I'm gonna check out and see if I like them. And then sus2, and then sus4, and then sus2. So we could, we could add that in there. So we have another voice go. I actually kind of want to hear a D in there as well. I think that sounds nice. We'll keep that four part voicing going on here. Okay, and we keep that ostinato going all the way through. Um, I think I see like that over E part happening after, so. Bum, bum. And I kind of, I think I'm gonna change his note, he'll probably be cool with it. Instead of doing a D again, I'm gonna go to G. Bum, bum. I like that he has a day crescendo also, that's really nice. I picture maybe a harp or something, potentially. Because you need to feel like it's gonna cascade down, so maybe something, you know. So I guess we'll just add kind of a low, a low little pattern here. We could even do a different pattern if we wanted to. Um, I'm not gonna try and play it, but we might program that. Cause we could do like. Might offset kind of that ostinato a little bit. I could also see some sort of a, a swell happening. Maybe the brass do. Um, Cause then we get into that. I'm also gonna change that rhythm there, so we'll do. And maybe even do a pickup. Cause I think that'll be nice. Pickups are usually a nice way to kind of have your melody uh, lead right into the next section. It sort of helps transition. So it's not just like boom, boom, boom. I like that he put a G5 here because I don't wanna reveal the harmony too early. I think I agree with him. Let's just keep it like open fifths and not change too much harmonically. Maybe rock between the one and the five. I like that, that gap. Okay, so I have to pay attention to these voicings because they're low. So I'm gonna make sure we don't get it too muddy. So. Some other instrument, trumpet and maybe strings. I think we'll also have the chords come in later too. So. I love that. Oh, C over D. Oh, oh, C over D, not D over C. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now we could have the ostinato start at 27. So something to offset all the syncopated stuff. It has a bit of a Western feel, doesn't it? We've got an opportunity for some like counter melody here. I I've been hearing this. We'll see if we either use it here or later, so. So this is, he's got the chords changing here, so I wanna support this with the harmonic rhythm, so. Dum, dum. I think I want to change this to a half diminished, to two half diminished, because I think it'd be nice. It's 
So we'll get it. Bottom. He said here it's very small. We could do six here. So maybe we'll do that. I think that could be nice. Now the first time we did that kind of thing, we did a gap. Da -da -da. So maybe something different. So for this to keep a little bit more harmonic motion, I'm going to use some uh, relative minors and majors. So E flat major seven could actually go into C minor seven. And then D minor seven is very similar to F major. So I'm gonna do, instead of just doing E flat major seven to D minor seven, I'm gonna do E flat major, C minor, F major, six, D minor seven. So, da -da -da, da -da -da. Now this part, he says soaring or romantic, so I always hear like something like. And I wanna pull this melody up an octave. Okay, we have a great opportunity for a little counter melody or something there. Maybe some sort of, I picture like pizzicato basses. See if that works. So we'll need something to swell there. So I'm always using the bass to kind of offset the downbeats. Need an extra bar here. I sort of feel that way. Now it's pretty much a repeat here, so we got to do just something different texturally. So I could see maybe we do like like French horns, like. So let's try that. Oh, I love that. Maybe we'll have the second time have, um, it'll be trumpets, because this could be nice to do like a. I don't know, something like that could be kind of cool. Yeah, and then we could have like something on the top, like some violin sustaining that line. Even though I'm not doing the orchestration, like I said, I still think about it because it's going to be orchestrated. I love that, man. Dia, you're killing me here. Ah. These parts are very brassy. Now here, I don't think we need the extra measure, so. Same as before, same orchestration. I love that, man. Harp run. Ooh. Maybe, maybe that's where we do that. We can do that. <laughs> we're very intense right now, so we're gonna need to pull back that energy so we can hit it more powerfully. Maybe we can get back to that. Have the strings pick it up. Oh, 
I like that. Okay, so it's pretty much what he did, but a little variation. E flat. A flat major. A flat dominant seven. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, instead of going to B flat, because I think it's gonna make this more powerful. Oh, he wrote high glassy flourish. So I could see that. So. They'll land on here, because that's where we're going to go for the run. And he's got, he wrote like... Okay, I think I got a good idea what I'm going to do. That was probably sporadic looking because that's how my brain works. I think of a lot of things simultaneously while I'm doing this, as I'm sure other composers do. So let's hop over to Logic and start inputting some of these ideas. Okay, so now what I've done in Logic is I've taken the basic ideas that I had at the piano, I've executed them, recorded them, and I've quantized them very precisely because when Mattia gets his sketch, he may want to copy-paste some of these MIDI ideas right into his orchestration. So to save him some time, I've done that. Now just about every idea I had at the piano made its way into Logic, but let's check it out in more detail and talk about how I did some of the nuanced problem solving. Now you'll notice here I've got this divided up into four different MIDI channels. Uh, the way I kind of do this is similar to how I study orchestration. I try to have melody on one staff, bass on another, harmony on a third, and then I have kind of flourishy stuff and ostinati on a fourth. It kind of alternates from channel to channel. Sometimes things don't work smoothly and I have to kind of change them, but that's the general idea. So with that in mind, uh, let me just play you some of it in full, and then we can talk about stuff in detail. All right, now that whole section is pretty much identical to what I worked out on the piano. Um, the only difference is now I've got that run, I executed it. It's just basically a G major scale. Kind of picturing that maybe in harp or woodwinds, something very light and flourishy. Okay, so in that part we have a little bit of overlap, but I think it's gonna be okay because the registers will be more pronounced when it's orchestrated properly. So the melody is actually taken in a pretty low instrument here. You know, it could be either trombone or horns, most likely horns. And then some of these upper uh, overlapping notes are gonna be probably taken by something a little bit lighter, maybe strings, uh, something like that. So we probably won't have that kind of level of overlap that we're having in the piano. We move over here and we have a little bit more overlap, but it should be okay. We're gonna have the strings probably take the melody. Now again, we're gonna have a bit of an imbalance registrally, um, but it's not gonna be a problem because uh, the orchestration will solve that. So let's just play that. Okay, let's go through all that. So basically I added a lot of flourishes that were not in the piano arrangement um, because we just need to do things to kind of accent it orchestrally. We have more uh, ability to do so. Let's solo out some of these instruments so you can hear them. There's our melody. Okay, now we have uh, kind of bass and ostinati. Okay. Now our next thing is the kind of woodwind flourishes. Okay, and then the last thing is some kind of 
one more ostinato. Now, Mattia might decide that he doesn't want to have certain things, and that's fine. It's just kind of stuff I'm placing in there for him. We'll move on now. Okay, so that's a little, I, I like to do this kind of thing typically in my romantic music. I have a little like flute and maybe glockenspiel or celeste, um, kind of outlining something a little quicker in between the space and the melody. Um, also a very John Williamsy thing to do, so. That's basically playing off of a, a Lydian for a second to make it feel a little brighter. Okay, moving on. Okay, now we move on to this next section, which I remember envisioning being like kind of French horns, bum, 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 with the pizzicatos, just to kind of break up some of the little, 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 little ostinato. Okay, that's gonna be more brassy for sure. Um, the whole feel of bum, 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 very fanfare-like. Also notice how everything was kind of downbeat oriented for a bit, and now we've got dum, bum, bum. So it's answering the melody. Bum, dum, da, da, dum, dum. Okay, simple. Little run. Okay, so basically here I've got a couple different things going on. I've got the old rhythm that we had before that was just playing. Right, but I wanted to add a little bit more movement in between. So um, I have some kind of brass answers along with just a consistent ostinato and maybe celli. Uh, he might bring that up an octave. It, it sounds like maybe it could use that, but, but we'll check it out. Pretty much just that with the melody because uh, that's pretty full. Um, and we're saving some of the flourishy stuff for the second half. So one more time. Okay, so that section, um, that's kind of very triumphant. Um, again, fanfare-like, but it's playing with uh, very British regal chords. Those kind of things. Um, so you'll hear that in the brass, what I'm picturing as the brass, uh, right around here. And then you've got the melody, of course, and then we've also kind of got a little bit of flourishes here and there, so I'll play that. The ostinato. Okay. Okay, remember I did that reharm that I wanted to do, so. A flat dominant seven, kind of a, a different reharm than what he had, but I think it's cool. 
And then a very slight retardando here, um, which he'll probably program a little differently, but just to have it in there for concept. Big run. There you go. So um, just to lastly touch on a couple quick things, um, the runs, basically the way I program them is uh, I want them to be even and notated uh, evenly so that it's easy for copy pasting. So sometimes there'll be like groupings of seven and stuff. And what I have to do for that, because uh, logic doesn't really have like seven sixteenths, um, is I'll have to record like 30 second notes and then go and use the flex tool in logic and kind of squish them together to match inside the beat. So that way it's very even distributions. Now you could just play this in and it'd be fine. Um, but for now, I like to do it this way. It makes me feel better when stuff is just hard quantized just for the sketch purposes. And then for the voicings, I try to generally keep all my voicings the same amount of voices uh, for each section. So sometimes it'll be three, sometimes it'll be four. So like in this section, for example, you notice everything is pretty consistently four part voicings. That's gonna make it easier for Matia to do the orchestration because he can divide these parts up better. If I was swapping between two part, three part, four part, constantly, every chord. It's just gonna be a pain in the butt to figure out how to orchestrate, and this is just better voice leading in general. So everything should feel very fluid, like it's its own voice, which it is. So you could take that and very easily just divide that one, two, three, four, cross an orchestration, and it'll be done. Um, so that's the idea. It's basically laying this out very nicely for him. Now again, is this playable for two pianists? Probably not. It's not idiomatically driven towards the piano specifically, but the idea is that it's an arrangement that could be suitable to be orchestrated. Now, if you wanted it to be suitable for the piano, of course, you can make a couple little tweaks. You might have to adjust registers a little bit, um, kind of adjust the runs maybe so they're a little bit more playable for a pianist, um, but you could absolutely do that. This is going to orchestra, so we're leaving it as is. So I'm gonna send this to Mattia now and I'll let him take it from there. I hope you found this helpful seeing how I work from the very beginnings of the sketch process, brainstorming ideas, and then eventually executing those ideas in logic. If you did find this helpful, I hope you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. I don't make much money in terms of ad revenue and Patreon is the best way you can support me for the content that I make. Be sure to check out part two on Mattia's channel. I think it's gonna be great. I'm really excited to see what he does with this. Thank you as always for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, yada yada, all the YouTube stuff and I'll see you in the next video.